so this is pretty much where I lived. Um, this is where Project 4 is. Um, it's founded by Aurora Boulevard um, around here, Bonne Serrano. And my house would be here, just under quantities. And I went to school here at PCC, which would be in this area. But um, this area is surrounded by several schools. There's um, the oldest university in the Philippines, that's University of Santo Tomas. There's the Far Eastern University. There's PSBA, but I forgot what it stands for. And then there's PCC. The private schools are on the other side of um, um, down Mendiola, but the students would all come out, would stream out of the various universities and congregate on Claro M. Recto, and this is where a lot of the uh, battles between police and students would have taken place, and there is a bridge called Mendiola, and people would cross that down to where um, the president of um, the Philippines lived. Malacanang Pauls. Uh, Dean's European itinerary. Here's Stuttgart, where I was stationed for two years, and I visited such cities as Munich, Vienna, uh, coming back to Zurich, Switzerland, Paris, I visited, uh, Rome, I visited, uh, and Athens. Let's, uh, let's go down to Athens over here. Uh, there was London, which is a little bit off the map, uh, but uh, I managed to get around considerably uh, in the time that I had uh, in Europe. So those are the main cities I visited at, uh, during that two-year period. I was born in Quincy, Illinois. I went to school in the middle of Missouri in a town called Fulton, an all-men's college. Uh, I went to the University of Illinois uh, over on the eastern side of Illinois, and I spent 10 years working in Chicago from 1958 to 1968, and then I went all the way out to the West Coast, which seemed in 1968 to be a long distance uh, from my two immigrant parents who were not happy about me being so far away. Uh, now, I did have an Army career, which took me to Arkansas, and took me to Virginia, and took me to New Jersey, right outside of New York, to catch a troop ship to Europe in Driving around trying to find out where we are. Yeah, and so I went to Bala. I think I got the bus to Rexham, maybe, and then my aunt picked me up. Bala's around here. Um, and then I stayed with um, my great aunt and great uncle Bryn for a week. And over the course of that week, I met like 45 relatives, which is more than I know in the US. And um, first, I met um, her son, Gareth. And he had been working on a family tree for the Welsh side of the family that goes back to uh, the 1500s. And um, after like getting to know him for a couple of days, then I felt like comfortable sharing my like little dictionary experience with him. And so I was like, when I was at the dictionary, the card and the bastard and all this stuff, and he was like, what are you talking about? And so then that's when I found out that um, only the American side of the family has that name for him. Um, because, like, everyone on our side says this because, like, he was a mean guy and also, like, no one knew who his father was. Um, but on the Welsh side, everyone remembers him really fondly. 
um, is like a really kind person. And so then he told me this story that um, my great grandfather was in medical school in Glasgow, in Scotland, and he was the first in his class. And uh, another student was really jealous, and so sent a letter home to his parents saying that he saw him in a bar. And so then um, my great great grandfather pulled him out of school. And so that is why he went to America. So as we came into the, the border crossing, heading east into Montenegro from, from Croatia, from Dubrovnik, if you will, we were, had to wait behind a cow right here. The cow was in the turnstiles ahead of us with bell and everything. Ding, 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 We laughed and laughed. We all had our cameras out the window door. We were all taking pictures of this cow. And as we pulled up right here into the, into the turnstiles, the, 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 the border patrol man was saying, no, 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 no pictures, but of course, none of this in English. We all said we were racing. We pretended to delete, 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 delete. We did not delete. <laughs> and then we took off. And the moment we crossed over into the border, it was this feeling, this feeling of martial law, of it just looked not abandoned, but it just didn't look safe. It was an incredible feeling of, oh dear, came upon all of us. And we headed right up in here and we decided we'd have some coffee and shake it up a little bit. You know, we wanted to feel, all right, we're, we're good, we're here, we're on our way to Puerto Rico, we're, we're singers, we're on a Rockefeller grant for goodness sakes. We had ourselves some espresso and everything all angles parked the car while we drank our coffee and we just got this feeling like let's just get out of here so we like let's just get to Puerto Rico so we headed back out We're like this is feeling funky and so then Julia gave me the choice do we want to go around the the fjord of Kotor the bay or the bay of Kotor or do we want to take a boat across it and I said let's go around it <laughs> Of course, after getting a full description of what a fjord was, because it, we were very unfamiliar. So let's pretend this is the fjord. It's actually enormous with like half domes right into it. It's unbelievable. We came around this corner and it just opened up to us. And it's where all the pirate ships came in from Dubrovnik to rob everybody. It was just so you could feel it. You could feel the, the, the revolution, the, the, the lawlessness. <laughs> it was crazy. And we didn't see anybody for so long. And we drove along this and we just loved it. Pomegranates hanging off the trees. Monasteries everywhere. I don't know how they procreate in Montenegro because there's monasteries everywhere and stunning. The mosaics, just beautiful. And so we went all around the edge of the fjord. It's, you know, like four hours. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. There was two little islands. One was man-made because they thought they saw, the, the guys in the ships thought they, the seamen, thought they saw Mary, the mother Mary's face in the in the rocks in the in the bed of the fjord, and so they started put, piling rocks on it for good for good measure for for good luck for blessings and prayers and until they built an actual little island and then they put a monastery on it. So there were two monasteries right in the middle that we got all this incredible view of as we went around it. We did not go up all the little roads to the monasteries, but as we came around to the edge right up here before we started to ascend up into what we learned were the Black Mountains, thus Montenegro, we came across Kator. This is where I will have a honeymoon someday. This is absolutely stunning. Oh, drove up onto the sidewalk. It was so unbelievable because just like Lord of the Rings with the, with the castles embedded up into the walls, it was just like with these walls, it zigzagged all the way up and all the lights went on at the same time and you could see the massiveness of this expansion up into the hills. It was so amazing. Architectural wonder, ancient history, absolutely mesmerizing. I drove up on the, on the curb, as I said. It was, it was sidewalk. It was my best driving moment. We got back on the road because we knew we had a long way to go. And then we began to climb. And it was the Z up and up and up into the Black Mountains. And the sun was going down and it was getting very dark. And the girls took a little nap and we got higher and higher. And then I started noticing we could only see on the very edge of the street. All we could see is a very tip of a huge tree. It was so steep. It was like just sheer down. And we, a lot of giggling on how scary it was. No, no, no road railings or anything. No yellow dots, no bot dots. Uh, we, we started all sorts of nonprofit uh, mission statements. 
you know, uh, we had um, uh, reflecting jackets for Bosnians. Pedestrian safety for Bosnians. Uh, uh, pedestrian safety for Bosnians, yes. We also had bot dots for Bosnians. Um, we would have liked some railings in uh, Montenegro. Croatia had all that, but, you know, uh, Croatia is the sea. All right, so we got up to the very, very top, and there was an abandoned menace, um, uh, monastery way up in here, and we we took our our regular uh, side of the car pee break, and then it's at this point it's dark, and we are heading still. We still have a pretty long way to go. Our directions were not reliable. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> and as we're driving, we're very quiet, and then all of a sudden, there's just right along here, there is a red light, literally just lying in the street. Boom, red light. Nothing else. Just one big red light lying in the middle of the street. And I stopped. I'm the same Ed Bonnevere, and you heard my little story. We arrived in New York, m worked our way up to Toronto. From Toronto, we went to Detroit. Detroit, Chicago, moved west to Kansas City, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. Highly recommend it. From Las, Las, Las Vegas, went down, 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 down to the deep south New Orleans, here someplace. And then we worked our way up to Little Rock. We went to uh, Richmond, Virginia, into Washington, back in New York. All this in less than 99 days for less than $99. Worth it. <laughs> go on, he was down, right down here with sick of boots, and then we just worked ourselves. Literally through here's how, where we went. Did go to High Five Course, and then we went, and everything took a couple of days. And we stayed. We went to Natania to Tel Aviv, which was a nothing city at the time. We went to Yaffa, which was more interesting than Tel Aviv was. And then we got to Jerusalem, and that was another that actually I should tell you a little bit about that because Jerusalem in '63 was just a new city. You could not go to the old city. And, and it belonged to Jordan, and there was like a no man's land, and you were not allowed to go there. And it grew to, so we, we could not see the temple. We couldn't see any of the, the old Jewish quarters. I mean, and I think the old city of Jerusalem is by far the most interesting one. So that was really a shame that we couldn't go there. And But from Jerusalem, we down through the Negev, which is the, the, the desert I thought was incredibly beautiful and very interesting and, and, and different, uh, you know, landscape-wise, you know. And we ended up in Masada, uh, which is all the way here. Is, where is it? Left? So let me see. Yeah, no, Masada should be, no, no, it's, it's more like here. And then after that, we went down to Milan, but Masada, we climbed Masada, which you, it's not so easy to do, or nobody does it anymore, I think. So that was it. And then after that, we went to a lot, and then we worked our way back up. I'm even slower. Okay, okay. Perfect. Oh, it's so incredibly slow. Slow race. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is Massachusetts, and I'm flying all the way across the Atlantic, all the way across from the UK into the Netherlands, Amsterdam in particular. Can you see? It's really tiny. There it is. 